really love reading, so I want to share some of my recent favorites and kind of ones that I feel like would be great to read in the fall. Hey guys, it's Rosie. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite fall cozy but also kind of spooky books. Um, so I think I have six recommendations right now and if I can come up with any more I will drop them either in the description or in the comments down below um, and also feel free to comment what you think about these books or if you have any other recommendations I would love to hear them so please let me know um, I'm always looking for new books to read because I love reading so much I'd say most of these rated like a four or five star and then there were a few of them that just gave me like this spooky feeling. I'm super excited to share these with you because I really enjoy reading especially in the fall when it is cooler out and you kind of just want to sit on the couch with a fuzzy blanket and curl up and read, have a hot drink, hot cocoa, hot tea, coffee, apple cider, whatever. Fall is the best time to do it I feel like because you're just getting out of that like summer go 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 and you're like okay I think it's time to relax now. So fall is the perfect time for that. Fall is a great season, but unfortunately it is a little bit cooler outside. So that is something you kind of have to have activities for um, in the cooler mornings or like when you're winding down to go to bed. Um, reading is just super fun. So I really love reading. So I want to share some of my recent favorites and kind of ones that I feel like would be great to read in the fall. So, the first book that I have is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. It's a very light read up until like the end when there is sort of a like surprising twist and it gets a little spooky there so it kind of turns like psychological later in the book but um, earlier it's kind of like a cute romance um, and of course it takes place on uh, November 9th. That's why the title is what it is and I'm reading out of this notebook if you see me looking down. Um, so it's the story of Fallon and Ben who kind of meet under some interesting circumstances um, and it's the day before Fallon is going to move across the country. She um, is living in LA and she just feels like she isn't vibing there so she decides to pick up everything and move to New York. So she meets Ben and they hit it off, but they decide not to exchange contact information and to only meet on one day a year. So they only meet on November 9th um, and they want to meet for five years to kind of test out their relationship and see if they're ever going to be anything or whatever. So there's like some trauma intertwined, which makes it pretty interesting um, and it just becomes a lot more interesting than you think it's going to be by kind of the start of it. I don't really know how to explain that, but it does go deeper into things where it's like, whoa, I did not expect that. So it's pretty interesting, but um, there's intrigue at the end that kind of makes it a bit chilling. So I think this would be a great fall read other than the fact that November 9th is in fall. The next one is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, it has such like a happy, warm feeling and um, I think it's just perfect for fall. I did read this in summer but whatever. I'm pretty sure I read all of these in the spring and summer but I think they'd be better for fall so I guess I kind of jumped the gun on those. I didn't really plan it but um, I really really loved The Night Circus. Um, one of the main characteristics of this book is that basically you don't know everything until the end so um, in the beginning you learn that there's like a competition and the rules are not outlined. Basically nothing about the competition is outlined. You just know that there is a competition and it is going to happen somehow, sometime, and um, there could be severe loss from the competition. So it's pretty interesting how you don't know everything until like the very end of the book when you're like, oh, so wait, that's what was happening. So I really enjoy books that kind of keep you in the dark for a little longer than just like explaining everything. Um, so it's basically the story of a circus that just shows up in the middle of the night like just like that and it stays for a while and then it just leaves without a trace. I really like how magic was used in this book. It kind of like encourages magic. You know sometimes there's like a pretty dark side to magic 
in um, fantasy books. It's like showing the public magic without telling them that it's magic, but showing them all the good things I can do. So it was a pretty interesting um, idea and I really enjoyed reading it. It like makes you want to accept magic almost. So I really enjoyed this one and it's super like, kind of like warm and fuzzy, um, a great, fall read. The next book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This book um, is it's very long and it does take some time to get into so I would recommend giving it a fair shot before you just say okay this is going on too long. Um, it does go over a span of 300 years so it is quite a journey so you have to um, understand that as you're going into it but Basically, it's a story of Addie, who grows up in a small town in France in the 1700s, and um, she's promised to marry a man in town, and she feels like she's meant to do more than that. She feels like that is not enough for her, um, because she can see what her future would be like. She would just be a housewife and have kids, and then that's it, and she doesn't want that to be her life, so she makes a deal with the devil and the devil says that she can live forever but there is a catch and nobody is able to remember her after they stop seeing her so if she leaves the room and somebody cannot see her anymore they forget about her so basically every time she meets somebody it's the first time even if she knows them so it's very um it's almost like psychological thriller kind of not like a thriller but you kind of are made to think about if you would do this or what would happen what it would feel like i guess um so nobody remembers her for almost 300 years until somebody does so that's why you keep reading somebody does remember her but i'm not going to tell you who or why or where so yeah that one is a really cool book it is definitely um an interesting idea i wasn't expecting it to be so like capturing, um, especially with the length. The next book is the Southern Book Club. The next book is the Southern Books Clubs. I can't talk. The next book is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. So this book, I wouldn't exactly consider it horror, but it definitely is a bit graphic in spots. So just be warned before you start reading. There are a few like kind of gritty gross scenes um and some like weird ideas in it but it's not really that bad um i wasn't like freaked out i was just like oh that's a little gross okay <laughs> but this book is about um patricia campbell who is a housewife in the south and she joins a book club because she feels like she doesn't really have anything to do in life except cook food and clean up after people and do laundry so um, her book club is just a bunch of moms who start reading murder mysteries um, and she's like focused on murder in her head of it's kind of keeping her occupied and stuff so the new guy that moves um, into the old house down the street she starts to become suspicious of him and weird things start happening and I'm not gonna tell you what but just think of the title. It gets pretty interesting. Um, this wasn't like a five star read for me, but it definitely is a great Halloween theme. So I would definitely recommend this one, especially if you're not into like hardcore horror, which I'm not, but you can deal with like a little bit of gross scenes. The next book is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This was definitely one of my favorite reads so far this year. It's like a perfect cozy fall read and it has pretty happy ending. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but I'd say I was satisfied by the ending. So basically it's about this girl named Nora who isn't really happy with her life and she doesn't feel like there's anything keeping her in her life. So she ends up overdosing. It's not the happiest turn of events to be honest, but um, she is taken to this place called the Midnight Library where she can go back and see what her life would have been like if she had made different choices. So she gets to try on all of these different lives and uh, basically decide if she would want to live out that life instead. It was just a very interesting idea and kind of heartwarming almost, like just to think about 
and all of her other lives were really cool like I enjoyed reading about them so I would definitely recommend this book um, if you want something that's it's pretty light I would say but it also has like the uh, deeper idea of like what happens next so if you want to <laughs> consider that but um, I feel like I would definitely love to curl up with this one I'm going to read it again definitely because such a good book it just seems like such a warm cozy read so the last book is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier this is the only one I own out of this list but I'm going to buy some of them because I really enjoyed a lot of these so this book starts out kind of like happy and summery uh, the main character is a ladies maid um, and she's on a vacation with her um, the lady she's waiting on I don't know what you call that but basically she meets this guy named Maxim de Winter so Maxim de Winter is a widower and he and the main character um, kind of they hit it off and uh, they end up getting married and they go back to Maxim's estate which is called Manderley and it's kind of like pretty well known around um, and so everything starts out okay and then uh, the main character feels like she's got this really big space to fill that everything that she does is in the shadow of Rebecca who is um, Maxim's first wife and everything that she does she feels like Rebecca did better she starts to learn things about Rebecca and um, Rebecca's life how Rebecca died so it's a pretty um, interesting book I wouldn't say it's a thriller but it's definitely like got the gothic themes in it and this is um, an older book it is a classic I would say um, it was written in 1938 so a lot of books like nowadays I feel like they follow the same themes but this one it was one of the first books like this so it's more unique in my opinion so I read this book for school and it's kind of rare I would say that I would really enjoy a book that I read for school but I did actually really enjoy this one it just seems like kind of spooky probably perfect for Halloween to be honest um, so yeah I recommend that you read Rebecca if you haven't yet and also why I kept saying the main character is um, the new Mrs. De Winter doesn't actually have a name so that's kind of interesting um, I was wondering why they didn't do that and I don't know so she is the current Mrs. De Winter those are my six books that I think you guys should read this fall um, I really enjoyed reading all of these and I think now that I'm like putting them together that they would be perfect for fall um, I didn't necessarily read them with fall in mind but now like I want to read them again I want to have that experience of um, having the feelings of the books along with like fall the leaves are turning it's getting cool out and I have an apple cider or something so yeah let me know what you guys think of these books and comment any recommendations that you have for me because I would love to read more fall books or if you have any other ideas. I've been starting to try out some Stephen King. I'm not really into like horror or anything but I want to try it. Um, I find that like reading um, more like thriller books is a lot easier for me than watching the movies so I just want to try it out just, just to see what I think. Um, I don't have super high hopes for how I'm going to take it, but I guess we'll see. I feel like I might have a lot to say about them, so yeah. Um, just, I might keep you updated on my Instagram, so make sure to follow that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, make sure to follow all of my social media at Rosie Revolts, and check out my Etsy shop, also at Rosie Revolts, and my book at GetOutDoorsBook.com, and I will see you guys later. Bye!